My name is uh, Ricardo Bird with the National Association of Neighborhoods. Uh, in the 50s, there was a similar discussion. Should we build an interstate highway system? It was primarily a state and local function. The way that was overcome, it was indicated that it was in the national security interests of the U.S. Does the panel feel that that is a, a better argument in terms of guaranteeing the sustainability of the U.S. as being a number one global power that we must build not for what's good enough for today, but what may be necessary in the future? Who wants to come in first? Jody, it's your time. Talk to them. Well, I'll say that, you know, I think forward thinking, that is the right policy to have. Um, we don't want to build the networks that are, you know, just good enough for the things that we know of today or yesterday. We want to build a network that can handle all the things that we want to do in the future. Um, you know, telemedicine or something like that. Right now, we're struggling just to get the network that can support that kind of service to all of the institutions. But in the future, maybe we'll have lots of applications that allow people who are homebound, who can't get to the hospital very easily, or their doctor lives far away, um, to have a network that will support they're using those kinds of apps from their home, and that way they can talk to and work with the institutions that can give them care, things like that. I, I uh, was the chairperson of this National Commission on Highway and on uh, Service Transportation Infrastructure Financing that Congress created in the last, the second last reauthorization. They knew there was this big financing problem for our transit and our highways. They created this bipartisan commission. I unfortunately got elected chair. And um, so we looked a lot at this question, and, and there was actually a very robust debate back in the 50s over whether this network should be uh, uh, privately, uh, would be a toll network. Uh, and there were a lot of advocates for a toll network back then. The reason you couldn't do a toll network back then were transaction costs. The transponders really weren't invented. Uh, if we were to do that again today, it would have been done as a toll network, uh, using 60 mile an hour fly through transponders. Now, why is that important? Because if you look at our tr service transportation, system, it is abysmally bad, okay? The amount of underinvestment we make every year, we, we invest uh, in public dollars about a third of what we need every year. So we're, we're, we're that level. If we do that with broadband, that's what exactly what we're going to get. We're going to get networks. Oh, geez, can we get, did we sign that appropriations bill this month, Jeff, to get the money for the broad? No, we didn't have enough money for that. Well, you're just going to be stuck with your network for a while. That's what, that's why the roads suck excuse my French, so bad in the U.S. because we're waiting for the appropriations bill to happen and it will never happen. So anyway, long diet, sorry on the diet, but I do think fundamentally we're going to get much better upgrades when companies have the resources and incentive to build those, and that's what we have now in much of the country. It's really hard to take this from the abstract to the particular, but I'm actually involved in building some of these networks. I make some side money consulting and so on. It's a very hard question right now among the best technical people I know. And I've talked to Milo Medin, who's running Google on this, and Nellie Cruz the, not so long ago, and a whole pile of reporters get to talk to everybody. It is not clear whether 50 or 100 megs is enough for a decade or two, or you want to dig a bit soon. Bob's colleague, Ellie Noam, thinks that in a couple of years, anything under 200 meg is going to be ridiculous. When I go over what's there, all the things that Susan Crawford said the other day on these great things in medicine that we won't get because 50 megabits, which we all, 80% of the U.S. already has from cable, too expensive, but the network is there, everything she put on that list that we wouldn't get without more investment works absolutely fine at 50 over 5. So it's a really hard, you really do want to get to the 50, we're going to have that to 90% because cable is already building it no matter what the policy is. That's what Bob told us in 2009, and one of the reasons the broadband plan didn't want to subsidize Verizon and AT&T to build fiber. There was lots of other reasons why that wasn't the right way to go, but because we knew in 2009 that we were going to get 50 meg to 90% of the U.S. That leaves us saying, how do we take care of the other 10%? And how do we make sure that the 90% actually get, can afford, and can use what we have? 
and I love to get a gig with everybody and I'm very proud to be involved in doing it.